Hey everybody, it's here Ronan Dave, and you may remember Helen from my uh, breast squeezing uh, video. <laughs> the rambling co-reporter. <laughs> yeah, she, uh, she she squeezed Japanese porn breast for the sake of charity, no less. I'm just that kind of person. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we just came out of a an experience. Let's just say that <laughs> I, 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 I we're, need. Uh, we've turned to drink. I. What I just witnessed, I need like three of these right now. Um, what did we see, Helen? We well, this evening we watched Forty Seven Ronin. Mm. Uh, or rather, we experienced <laughs> Forty Seven. I don't know what the fuck I just saw. That was fucking weird. I can't English right now. <laughs> it's just I. I, I mean, I, I, I went into the movie with low expectations, you know, thinking, oh, maybe I'll like it. Maybe I'll, I'm not. <laughs> see, you know, I'm so. I'm just so aghast. I can't even hate the movie. I went in with low expectations, <laughs> and I was still let down. <laughs> but see, I mean, I was just so flabbergasted. I I don't know what I watched. It was something. It was the most bizarre. I mean, it was kind of like a Westerner's view of Japan. Who's never been to Japan. Never been to Japan, maybe. Not actually interested. In yeah, not, yeah, just <laughs> kind of like, yeah, just throw some samurai and some castles. I make sure everyone's in kimono. Yeah, yeah. And then the, you know. Yeah, well, what we, say, we were saying like it was like a mix between Lord of the Rings. Oh yes, yeah, so 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 yes, yeah, so the bad guy lived in Mordor. Yes. And the good people <laughs> lived in uh, uh, the, the Hobbiton. Yes, yes. Um, the bad guy was played by Tommy Wiseau. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, though, of course Keanu Reeves, so he's like the big kind of American actor. Um, his character was Jon Snow. Yeah. Yeah, uh, <laughs> so it's like Game of Thrones thrown in there as well. Game of Thrones, uh, Robin Hood, Prince of Yes, Thieves there was a couple of well. scenes that, stolen from there. That came in a few times as well. Yeah, yeah. It's strange enough, the one story they didn't steal very much from was 47, 47 Ronin. Ronin. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, the, you know, the ex <laughs> okay, like just to give you a quick rundown. All right, the original story, the 47 Ronin, it's supposedly 1701, I think it was, by Western calendar. There was a Lord of Akko. Uh, Lord Asano Nagamori, he had to go to Tokyo, or Edo as it was called by, back by then, to meet envoy, envoys from the, uh, the emperor. In order to do so, he had to know all these obscure uh, uh, court rituals. And of course he didn't know them, so he went to the shogun's court official, Kira Yoshinaka, who was the uh, person in charge of all those court official ceremonies and all that. Now, Kira expected bribes for his services, but Asano, for whatever reasons, uh, did not believe in giving bribes, so Kira got really pissed off, started insulting him a lot. Finally, Kira got pissed off to a point where he pulled out his sword, his short sword, and tried to kill him. Failed to do so, but because he pulled his sword out in the Shogun's uh, castle, palace... Big uh, no-no. Yes. He, w he had to commit seppuku. And his lands were taken away from his family, and uh, all of his samurai were made ronin. Which, as we know, like in the movie, in the movie, like the shogun character, what was he? What did he say? Oh, oh, yeah. So, um, so for <laughs> for the benefit of the the Japanese people that he was talking to, who yeah. would know damn well. You you must commit seppuku. Yeah. Kill yourself. <laughs> yeah, as though the uh, yeah, as though the Lord would have gone. Eh? So, seppuku. <laughs> seppuku. Here. But I am Japanese. Yeah. Uh, so he actually I'm... explained it, and then and then later says, "You are now Ronin," and then he goes, <laughs> "Masterless samurai." Yes, because Thank you me. Japanese who are Japanese would not know that. We only but speak he, English. Yeah. So he actually had explained in the movie. He goes, "You are now Ronin." Masterless Samurai <laughs> to people who would have damn well known what Ronin meant. <laughs> so, but in the real story, in the real story, so because the lands, uh, uh, his family was dispossessed of the land, all the samurai retainers did become Ronin because they no longer had masters. Most of them went elsewhere looking for other uh, employers. Forty-seven of them decided to take revenge, but at the same time try to get their lord's um, wife, brother, to get the lands back. And they spent two years trying to throw off the spies of both the Shogun and Kira. And that's where the real drama of the original story is, is um, the main what characters... They, what they went through to yeah. kind of throw off yeah. the, um, 
Kira's uh, uh, sense of like uh, insecurity. Yeah. So um, they would they would put themselves through uh, like situations that would get you know take away their honor. Yeah. Basically. To say so that they were no longer samurai and they weren't going to try for revenge. People would spit on them and yeah. say that they're not samurai. And in a culture where face is everything and shame, it, you know, the only way to to erase shame is to kill yourself. Yeah. Seppuku by the way <laughs> is which uh, as we're explained by the show you know if you're Japanese I need to explain that to you because <laughs> you, won't you wouldn't know that. it uh, that that is the only possible solution to uh, you know to shame that has been yeah. put upon yourself or, or your family yeah so in the original story huge, uh, both huge historical and the uh, kabuki and uh, puppet plays that were made of it that was the big thing was especially the main character uh, Oishi um, he like in one of the kabuki plays I know of, he eats um, taco, octopus, on the anniversary of his master's death, which is a big no-no. But as soon as, in the, in the kabuki play, when he does that, like, uh, Kira's spies are like, oh, he has completely forsaken his master. And so they started to relax their guard. And then, both historically and in the original plays, that's when they start stealing away to Edo, Tokyo. And then on December 13th, 14th, by Western calendar, they attack Kira's mansion here in Tokyo, Edo, and eventually kill him, take his head to Singakuji Temple, which is in the Shinagawa area, uh, where the grave of their master was presented there. And then after that, they turn themselves over to the Shogun's authority, and um, there was a big debate, like, what to do with them. Like, kill them like criminals because they did break the law. Uh, in the end, they were allowed the honor of committing seppuku, which they were actually very happy to get because they thought they were just going to get beheaded or hung or something like that. Traditionally, in Japanese culture, yeah. seppuku is a great honor. It's not yeah. punishment. But in the movie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the main story. What what happened in this movie? There's something about witches, well, dragons, and... So yeah, Kira had a witch I from yes, yes. Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves. Yes, yes. Two different um, eye colors. She sometimes turned into a fox. Yes. And Keanu could tell. Yeah. He knew. Yeah, okay, okay. What was Keanu? Uh, he was half British, half mm. Japanese. Yes. Raised by Tengu. Wolves? Uh, oh. No, no, Tengu. <laughs> Tengu, okay. <laughs> Might as well have been wolves. What the fuck? All right. No, they were, they were like... Bird creatures? Bird men kind of thing. Bird All right, well, if you know anything about Japanese mythology, Tengu are either long-nosed goblins or bird goblins with wings, uh, renowned for their martial arts skills. So that was kind of that was wow, kind of in there. Wow, that was actually not far off. Yeah, I mean, like that, okay, that Legends. part of the film, yeah. Okay. But just having Keanu as a half English, half Japanese outcast raised by these mystical goblins. He was yeah. automatically accepted yeah, by well, Asano. Well, why not? <laughs> <laughs> they find um, Keanu, Keanu when he's, uh, I don't know, 13, 14? Yeah, he's escaped. All over his yeah. Head. And he decides to take him in. As you do. Uh, yeah, why not? Why not? <laughs> when you find a boy in a swamp. Yeah. Yeah, why not? Who's not Japanese? Yeah. In a, in a land that at that particular point in time, it was the death penalty for anyone not Japanese to be in Japan. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, why not take someone who's not <laughs> Japanese into your home, which is an immediate death penalty? Yep. Considering the only contact that Japan had at that time was with the, the Dutch. Yeah. And it was it was a highly controlled yes. uh, colony in Nagasaki. It was a Bejima. colony of pirates who used to fight all the time in the oh. arena. So the movie also steals from Pirates of the Caribbean as well. <laughs> of course. Yeah. Why not? Why, why not? Why not? Yeah. Why not? Let's go hog wild. But anyway, so Asano, uh, Lord Asano, takes in this half-breed who was raised by goblins, uh, bird, go <laughs> bird goblins, um, and um, it, it shoots ahead in time to when Keanu is like in his 40s, and, and but I uh, see in the original uh, history, uh, Lord Asano was a young lord, which is kind of like why he lost his temper in the original story, history, whatever, uh, he was a hothead. In this one, he is a venerable lord who's about like 70 years old. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and, and so, okay, so I told you originally, Kira kept insulting him until he attacked him. Okay, so, and that was in the Shogun's 
palace uh, castle in Tokyo. But in this one, the shogun comes to, to Akko. Yeah. And comes to Asano's yeah. abode. And then, oh, oh, then. For a big show. Yeah, they have a tournament. As they used to oh, do yeah. back in Japan. Oh, the tournament. <laughs> yeah, and they had an eight foot tall samurai guy. Roman samurai. Roman samurai armor guy. Roman gladiator samurai. Yeah. Uh, eight, yeah, eight foot. Yeah. Um, and when he stepped, you actually heard thump. Thump. Yeah. Thump. <laughs> uh, but um, so it turns out that the, uh, um, Asano's champion. Game of Thrones. Game of Thrones. <laughs> got bewitched. Oh, oh, that was it. Like, they find him. Why? We don't know. Yeah, why? And it doesn't matter. Yeah, it actually didn't have anything to do with it. They could have just let him get beat. I don't know. Yeah. But anyway, they find him. Like, his eyes are all glazed over. And one... And it says, oh... Witchcraft. Witchcraft. And they just go, oh, okay. They, they don't go like, what? But they just go, witchcraft. It's my, it's my next excuse if I'm late for work. <laughs> why are you late, Helm? Witchcraft. witchcraft. So... <laughs> Keanu dons the armor, which uh, with the face mask and all that, so they don't know it's Keanu. And we don't actually know because they don't show us getting into the armor. But no. as soon as he steps up and he goes, <sighs> that only takes a couple of minutes. Yeah, and you're like, oh, that's armor. yeah, like and it's not the other guy. It's definitely Keanu. And being an outcast, of course, mm. he's been completely trained. In yes, the art of yes, the of samurai. course, yes. Archery. Yeah. Uh, Katana. Yeah. Of course, of course you know. Yeah, there's a couple scenes when he outdoes the actual samurai who've been trained all <laughs> he their life. Them with yeah. His yeah. I, I mean, just I actually. Standing there. I, I, at some point, I actually got embarrassed in the movie where I'm like, oh, <laughs> Jesus. You know, it's like, what? You know, like, yeah, it's the. Basically, the California guy, American guy, outdoes the Japanese samurai. So bodacious. Yeah. Sort of. <laughs> um, but. He gets his mask knocked off and then realizes, he is not samurai. <laughs> well, no, no shit. He's not also, he's not Japanese. What the fuck? <laughs> and, but nothing really happens. They just say, okay, you know, beat this guy, whatever. And then they, uh, the bad guys, uh, the witch and Lord Kira, launch another scheme with some spider made of Kira's blood. Some, uh, maybe. Yeah. Evil spider. Yeah. And spiders are evil. Yeah, yeah, why not? Lord of the Rings. Yeah. Yep, yeah, yeah, there you go. Lord <laughs> Sorry, it makes Asano, Asano crazy. crazy and attack Kira. And be, now this is what's weird. It's like they say, you attacked an unarmed guest, you must die. But it's like, but that was Asano's castle. Yeah. You know, it's kind of like... It's Asano's word against Kira. Yeah, it's his, and it's, it's his, his home. It's his home. But, you know, if, they, and if, the original, if they've exchanged bread and salt yeah. under their house, you know, you can't... Don't slay the guests. Yeah. Don't guests. You, don't them. you don't walk fray them. You don't walk yeah. You don't walk fray them. Yeah. Game of Thrones. But, um, so you have to die. but see, like, because the original history, uh, Asano drew his sword in the Shogun's castle in Edo. He was the guest, he was the visitor, and Kira was a court official. So he, you know, uh, doubly did wrong in that case. But in this situation, it's almost like it's his castle. And, you know, he, uh, Kira insulted him earlier, well, whatever. It didn't make sense. And also, from a tactical point, it didn't make sense because um, Asano's men could have just killed everybody. <laughs> yeah. So it, it completely changed that around. That was dumb. Um, makes no sense. Yeah, so, but, but then Asano, uh, no, sorry, uh, uh, the Shogun Tokugawa, who would have been Suna Yoshi, they don't ever mention that, but I know that. Um, he says, Because it's, no. it's, it's, it's an historical fact, that's what I Yeah. <laughs> and they go, you must commit seppuku. You must What's, kill yourself. Yeah. <laughs> and he goes, sorry. Uh, <laughs> yeah, he actually explains what seppuku is for the audience who may not know. Who may not know. But it's so weird Japanese being so difficult. Yeah. But saying it in in context to Asano, who is <laughs> Japanese, who would be very aware of what seppuku means. Then afterwards, when he, he says, like, uh, uh, Asano's daughter, who never existed, uh, is going to marry <laughs> Kira. And then he says to... In Mordor. Yeah, in Mordor. <laughs> and then he says to uh, Oishi, yeah, he says, you are now Ronin. Masterless samurai. <laughs> yeah, oh. no shit. Yeah. And then, like, what do they do? They throw Oishi into a pit for one year. Oh, when he gets out, it's winter, even though it was spring at the time. I, yeah. yeah I, and then he goes to Dajima, 
which in historical times was where the very small colony of the Dutch were in Nagasaki, very, very controlled. But in this movie, it's like, it's basically Pirates of the Caribbean. They're like gladiator fighting. There's and no rules. Yeah, it's just. It wasn't a place for, for the Dutch and the Japanese to exchange knowledge. Yeah. To to talk about science, to exchange uh, uh, methods and uh, of, of measuring um, weather, for example. Yeah, but uh, in this movie, in this instrument. movie, it was just a no. place to exchange scurvy and uh, STDs. I, I don't know. It was, just like, uh, it was just basically Pirates of the Caribbean. Oh, and one of the people, people you see, guns. yeah, one of the people you see in the uh, like uh, photo promeres is uh, promeres uh, promotions. <laughs> sorry. That's a new word. Promere! Like it. Yes. <laughs> is a guy like in, photos. a guy that has like this like he skeleton tattoo on his whole body, and he looks like he's kind of a major character, and all he does in the thing goes stranger. Yeah. <laughs> that's it. That's it. That's it. Like you think he's a major weird character, and that's it. He's just some piratey guy, and you never hear from him again. You never so see who, him again. Who who went to Deji? In the movie, Oishi. Oishi. So yeah. Oishi goes to Dejima in the movie, and he's looking for a Kai, played by uh, John Snow, played yeah. by Keanu, Keanu Reeves. Reeves. And he enters the dojo from the Matrix. Yes. And yeah. finds John Snow, Keanu, Kai <laughs> fighting with one of the. Oh no! You mean ogres? Yes. From yes. He's, he's 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 fight. It's like some. I heard, I I swore I heard Boromir say. They brought a cave troll. <laughs> yeah, he's literally fighting a cave troll. <laughs> oh, and then there was a fat samurai. There was a fat samurai. Uh, you know, because, yeah, sure, why not have a fat samurai? He was kind of the comic the, relief. He, we get to see him for about two minutes uh, pretending to cut a branch. Yeah. So he's pretending to saw a branch with a katana for some reason. And then he dies. Yeah, yeah. And then <gasps> you gave that little... away. That was one of the most traumatic moments for me. Uh, just remember, okay, his name is Robert Paulson. <laughs> his name is Robert Paulson. But when he's dying, he gives this like, "When I was a child," and I'm like, "I'm like, look, dude, I hardly know you. I really don't, don't care, care about, about you. your backstory. We just want just you to die, die just die, just die." So this bizarre movie can continue. <laughs> Yeah, because they have a the scene road that it's chosen. where they try to attack Kira at one point at a shrine, but instead it's that witch, and she kills like almost all of them, and then they decide, well, we'll try one. I mean, the first time we failed gloriously. <laughs> Why not try it again? Mm -hmm. And this time, though, they have far less men than they had the first time, uh, and they say, we are now 47. <laughs> uh, okay. And that's that's, yeah, like, the, that's the only reference yeah. to Forty Seven Ronin. Whereas, 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 like before, you were like a thousand. Like, you were a thousand. You got all slaughtered, and the rest ran off. And now you're like, no, oh, we are forty seven. That should because be like contractually obliged to say that exactly. <laughs> one time in the yeah. Time. Instead, they should have been. They should have been like, fuck. Yeah. They steal <laughs> from Robin Hood, where they enter <laughs> the castle as a playing troop. Robin Hood. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. As a troop of actors. Yeah, and there's there's guards on the walls, and there's so there's so, what some of the Ronin are climbing up the yeah. walls, and they just whoosh, yeah, just ex you know, pick pick a scene from the yeah, that big pretty much yeah, scene yeah, and they yeah. Copied it. So they I, they cut. I actually was surprised that we didn't see either Keanu, hmm. uh, John Snow, or Oishi like, get <laughs> get a, get an arrow and light it. Yeah. And, like fire it across. And then and then something the explode. Lines. I yeah, I was a, a bit upset. A little bit yeah. That yeah. Didn't do that because by this point in the movie, they made why not? Well. Yeah. yeah. Oh, but they did blow something up, and the eight foot tall guy from earlier in the movie. He just he was. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah the one the time, big like bad guy, yeah. the big boss guy that you think no one wants to fight him. And he gets some atomized. Explosion. Yeah, he gets atomized. <laughs> what the hell? Like you could at least the way the movie was going, like have him fight Keanu or Oishi, and at least have Oishi beat him in a fight. You know, but it's. <sighs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, and then Keanu fights the dragon witch. Yeah, that that happened. It was yeah. a very, very bizarre she, she movie. She turned into the never-ending story dragon. Yes. The never-ending story dragon, dragon on meth. <laughs> <laughs> That's what she looked like. <laughs> it was just a very, very surreal movie. Do you recommend this movie? 
I actually do recommend <laughs> this movie because it all, I recommend read it, read the history, read some of the Forty Seven Ronin, um, and then forget about it completely. <laughs> <laughs> and watch this movie. It is like, and, or if you enjoy sh- shit movies, yeah. made to be good movies. Uh, and I, I'm like trying to figure it. out, like I'm trying to figure out what they were trying to do with this movie. Like, like they called the movie the Forty Seven Ronin, and they released it in Japan first. Well, Japanese know oh, the story yes. of the Forty Seven Ronin, so they would be the first ones to look at the movie. And go, what? Imagine watching. Imagine, okay, whatever country you're in, imagine an, a, a very important, very well respected historical uh, tale or legend or whatever, and imagine someone from say Japan yeah. any country that you know has a different language from yours making that story and using their language and not yours yeah. so imagine the wild west in Japanese so how much did did the movie gross in Japan in the first weekend 1.3 million dollars uh, U- US dollars and right. you were saying so we worked so we worked it out okay so so we're filming this little video in Ikibukuro right mm-hmm. now Ikibukuro Station, um, on a daily basis, has about two million, two three million people pass through Ikibukuro Station. Um, to to make one point three million dollars, you that that's about roughly about sixty five million. No, 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 sorry. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I'm giving this film too much credit. Sixty five thousand people. Out of the whole country of Japan. Yes, out of the entire Japan. That is 3.25% of the daily traffic through Ikibukuro Station. Think about that. (laughs) 3.25%. And see, that's what I think is strange. Is like, the movie is called 47 Ronin. Now, for a Japanese audience, they know 47 Ronin quite well. So as soon as they would see a dragon, they'd go, I don't remember that in the original 47 story. Then it's it's broadcast in America where they wouldn't know the 47 Ronin movie except for Japanese Japanophiles and they they would know that there weren't any dragons in that story. <laughs> so it's like why did you bother putting your Japanese fantasy story in the 47 Ronin story when Japanese wouldn't buy it and Americans who would watch a Japanese fantasy wouldn't know the 47 Ronin to begin with, so it seemed like a wasted effort. And con- like, considering how amazing the original story is, yeah. anyway, why but like, mess with that? What we <laughs> watched, you basically could have taken out most of the 47 Ronin element and just made an entirely different movie. Bad guy wants chick, gets the father killed, and then, you know, her boyfriend... The uh, you know the ha- the outcast goes and saves her and gets her back. Prince's Bride, basically. <laughs> but yeah, that's what they could have just done that, and that would be fine. But instead of trying to actually take a real historical uh, event and one that is so so well known in Japan, a very important event, and try to make this fantasy movie, it's just like why. Ugh. It was definitely an experience. It, yeah, we're 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 at a loss even after all of this. Yeah. Nearly, we're, Hence we're, the whiskey. This we're trying to figure this out. Uh, we we still don't get it. However, uh, I do recommend the movie. Yeah, what? Just it? for the surreal experience. Don't, don't expect a good movie. Highly fictionalized. Yeah, highly fictionalized. I, I, I walked into the movie. Don't expect to. If if, if you have to do a report on the Forty Seven Ronin. Dear God, do not do a report based on this movie. <laughs> you will fail. You will get an F. But if you just want a surreal experience, trying to figure out what the hell the producers were trying to do, this is the movie for you. If you can, if you can understand that, then please yeah. tell us. Yeah. We would love to know. Also, it is a um, mind fucked of a movie. If you're interested in the story, just read the story of the Forks of yeah. Conan. Yeah. I mean, it's it's amazing on its own. Oh, and also check out my video on the festival that I, I've been to five or six times. Oh. All right, then. All right, we see you. We're going to cook the kombini because... Yeah, we're going to drink some more because <laughs> we're, we're still trying to deal with this. Oh. Okay, see you. Cheerio. Bye. <laughs>